Hello, everybody. Welcome to the War Game Show. We are back. Dun, dun, dun. We got Abe. We got Adam. We got me. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching us. We are... Uh, Hello. Um, we, all, we, we all have kind of different sets. Adam, I love, <laughs> I, I love that, that awesome set you're on. It's Thanks. Like, it's, it's almost like I'm in the studio in the other room because like, I'm filming stuff. Almost like you're in the studio and not your house. Yeah. I, I Abe, am, yeah. Abe, I'm loving your uh, your library. <laughs> my, people, right. my, people, my people only believe in putting books on the upper left. That's, oh, yeah. the, that's the rule of my people. Only the upper left. See, if uh, I was really smart, what, we, what I should have done is I, I needed to just get copies of whatever's in the studio, and then we could set up. I could set up my own fake studio here, yeah. and then we'd be like, we all have the same background. That's true. <laughs> We'll shoot yes. like a yeah. We'll get Adam off the set. And we'll take a picture of it, and you can use it as your Zoom background. It'd be great. Yeah, but we have um, we have so many so many bookshelves to choose from in here. I just we, I, I just pick one with a chair in front of it instead of the that's bench. That's true. That's true. So. Uh, so we are talking about all kinds of cool. A uh, lot of stuff is coming for 40k. Actually, probably like the most stuff that's come out in a long time. We have been talking about Space Marines and Necrons for a long time, and now we have other Space Marines. <laughs> And and not yep, Necrons yep. to talk about. All right, everyone yeah. have your show and tell. Adam, what do you what do you what do you have to sh to, to to show? I've got the uh, things that I'm actually filming today, which are Woo! the Outriders and these Hounds of Morkai here. So, oh, um, yeah, I, I yeah. want to I want to say one thing about the Hounds of Morkai real fast um, because we did a pricing breakdown post, and I only included one. Uh, one of the upgrade sprues, which was like 14 bucks, and people were giving me crap in the comments. It's because I included the price for this, which was like 45 bucks, and it has another sprue in here, so it was all part of the same pricing. So, my yeah. pricing breakdown, my pricing breakdown post was correct. So, in your uh, faces, in your faces, internets, not really, they always but... say never read the comments, never read the comments. So, is, I, it, I, is the box. Uh, it, it, it's just a box of reavers with one or with two. It's uh, it's one upgrade sprue, which was uh -huh. part of my pricing post. So there was the additional upgrade sprue, and then the one sprue of reavers, which is snapped in half. But you can kind of see, I don't know, you can see sure. like, it's 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 five reavers. So if you look in the corner of the box, you can only build five miniatures. Right. Only build five there's minutes. Nothing, here, there's so. nothing actually unique in that box, right? That's just other sprues repackaged. Yes. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, that's now right. they do have special rules. Uh, right. So I do want to mention that, but yep. that's in the codex. And then the the Outriders are essentially the Indominus Outriders rebox as well. So okay. I mean, yeah, just to let people know. So I have that, that means they're that means they're push fit. Yes. I have these. Dun dun dun. Dun, 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 dun. Three books came dun. out. Three books this weekend. We're going to be going through all of them and talking about them. Abe, what do you have? I I have the Space Wolf Skyhammer Wolf Pack, which <laughs> I think I think bears the distinction of being something you won't be able to get this weekend. Ooh, that's true. It's true. Unlike the rest of these items. That's true. <laughs> all right. Still in shrink well, so, wrap too, Abe. Still in shrink wrap. Thing? Yes. So let's go over the miniatures first and get those out of the way. Uh, two things came out. Oh, also, man, uh, this must have been old. Fifty-five uh, bucks for it. Uh, Gauze and Ragnar came out yes. too individually. Yes. So from the old, you guys will remember the. Uh, oh, I forgot what the name of that box set was. It it's was not the, Tooth and Claw. Prophecy of the Wolf. Prophecy of the yes. Wolf. Yeah, yeah. Prophecy of the Wolf was the Gauze and Ragnar box set. Now Gauze and Ragnar have re-entered the world of of clam pack standalone miniatures. You can just go and Makari. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm don't Macari. Macari. I, I will never, important. I will yeah. never forget, forget uh, Macari. Yeah, Macari. I mean, Macari like the seventeenth. We don't know which they just all take off on the mantle whenever Macari dies. A the luckiest grot, grot the oh, immortal. So, like, maybe Macari is actually the name of like the banner, <laughs> the standard, and it's just like he who holds the standard is Macari. Like, it's like I an like honorific. It. Maybe it's like a, a title, an honorific title. For the the, the Makari. Makari. The Makari. I like it. Yes, exactly. And uh, okay, so um, so those are out. 
Uh, then we, of course, uh, out, out, uh, individually packed uh, Outriders are, are out. Outriders were really interesting in the Space Spring Codex because uh, they were kind of weird and standalone because they, alone out of all these new options, they just have a unit size of three and it's fixed, mm -hmm. which a lot of people were like, what is up with that? You know, why is it three and three only? It seems, all, I mean, and, and Outriders are really good, but... So we're like, okay, I guess they're just going to take those exact sprues and repackage them, and those are just units, and it looks like that's exactly what they've done. It's kind of what they did. They're not the, uh, the suppressors of this, of this release <laughs> that just never get spoken of again. Yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see more from them. Um, I, I would have liked to see you know, just the ability to uh, do some different arm positions or something. I mean, I guess you could technically, but because they're push fed, it gets a little weird because of yeah. some of the pegs and stuff. But hey, a little green stuff will go a long way. They are a super good unit, though. So you know yeah, they're going to be even at three. They're going to be su super popular, and like we're we're finding out, I think they're going to. I think Outriders are going to have a, a uh, uh, They have a lot of mileage. Uh, yeah. Ahead of them, ha 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 ha. Uh, in like Death Watch, <laughs> I'm sure probably well, Raven Wing too. So I, was I, gonna, I, I, I think they're going to be more useful as more supplementals come out. Yeah, there's definitely weird. Go ahead, Abe. Yeah, there's definitely weird, weird chapters that make a lot of use of them, and I feel they feel like one of those units. Um, every now and then, you'll get these units that come out with a big release that really haven't hit their prime. Yes, um, and they feel like one of their units that's that's going to be decent in this codex, and it's going to be really hot in the. Next ninth edition Space Marine Codex. <laughs> yes, in in eighteen months. Yeah, yeah, or in twelve next year, basically next summer, or whatever. Yeah, uh, they feel like that's one of those units that's like gonna get a full box with options or something at that point. Yeah, um, you know, you, you get them every now and then, right? That these units sure. that come out and they're not uh, kind of like, you know infiltrators weren't really hot when they came out in sure. in, in Shadow Spear, right? Right, and then, right, right. right. Six, 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 eight months later, when that when the new book came out, they became much hotter. Intercessors were kind of blah for a while too. Yep. You know, you, you get units like that even in these uh, good release waves. I'm yeah. already, I'm already looking at these outriders and trying to figure out where are they going to put the chaos spikes on them because you know that those, right. are gonna, those are going to be chaos bikers like in five years. With you yes, know. especially when Thomas gets them. So that is correct. I would say too, uh, one of the weird things. Because uh, I just got to flip through the Death Watch Codex today, or supplement. It's not actually a Codex. It's this Codex supplement. Um, they are going to be one of the weird chapters that can actually take them in with five. So mm -hmm. there's sure. the uh, yep. the kill mm -hmm. team, the specific kill team for intercessors, essentially like Mark uh, Mark Ten power armor, um, and you can take up to five extra models. Yep. So and then you can combat squad. So that lead to some interesting questions because we brought this teacher. up before. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We brought yeah. this up before with the FAQ that came out, but now that we've actually read the rules, you could, uh, you could take five of them in the Fortis kill team combat squad, those five guys out. And now you have a troop unit that is bikers. That's all outriders with uh, their charge ability too. And they can turbo boost, right. which yep. seems okay. So, yeah. So, what are the what are the weird interactions you also have is if they don't combat squad and they're with, you know, they have intercessors with them, even though they're you probably don't want to do it because it does slow them down significantly. Right. Right. Uh, sure. But amusingly enough, they're not bikers at that point. Yeah. Uh, and you can like it's it weird. Go up. So they can like go into buildings. They can like yeah. go into buildings and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think they and I think they could maybe I think they could technically go in transports. I think that's a, a weird issue. Oh my god, that's so uh, cool. that's like they're not bikes at that Ooh. point. And I think they, and I think I'd have to uh, double check, but I you can put them in it's weird. No, it's 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 weird if you read how the biker keyword works. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's weird it's like weird. they're yeah. bikers, but they're not bikers. It's they're bikers, it's they're not a bikers, real weird interaction. Led, led by brother sergeant Chuck Norris. Right. Delta Force yeah, is Delta Force. In the building. <laughs> so good. Yeah. But again, yeah. like Adam said, you probably are like, yes, you could do some weird shenanigans that way. Sure. It's probably just better off to, to split them off. Yep. Um, and I do want to point out that so in the old codex, there was the a stratagem that let you split off during the game, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Now combat squad, that, that stratagem does not exist. So if you're looking to combat squad 
uh, those off, you got to make that decision like before okay. deployment. Yeah. Yep. I think, yep. Even so, uh, let's let's go over our books. What what uh, who 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 do we want to do first? Do we want to do do we want to talk a little bit? Let's talk. Watch? Let's talk Space Wolves Forge real quick. World or, or Space Wolves. Yeah, I want to talk Wolves? Space Wolves real fast okay. because I, I just got to flip through it too, and uh, it's it's got some interesting stuff in it. First off, it's eighty eight pages, and yep. it's a supplement. Um, both the Death Watch book and the Space Wolf book are like thirty bucks, um, yes. and you get the rules, the digital digital code in the back. So it's actually kind of a weird thing. They're not as they're clearly not as big as the Space Marine book. The caveat is you do need the Space Marine book. Because, again, these are both supplements. Uh, and without the Space Marine book, neither one of them works um, because of so, points and stuff like that. So, so if you're playing Space Wolves, your codex is 80 bucks because you have to buy the Space Marine book and right. the, the, the supplement. So the first thing I wanted to note about this, this Space Wolf book is while it's 88 pages, it is ultra dense. Lots of people, one of yeah. the complaints that lots of people had – uh, last year was when the supplementals came out, in particular some of the ones that were really, really thin, like, say, mm -hmm. uh, Imperial Fists yeah. or, Raven, or Raven Guard. Is there, like, it's cool that I have, like, now all of the history and background of every company, you know, of every company in the chapter, and I got an extensive history, which for super fluff nerds like Abe and I, we were like, these 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 books are super awesome, but for the, hey, but I want like rules. Like four or five pages of rules, yeah. Yeah, but but yeah. for the people who were, who were like rules people, they were like, hey, yeah. like, you know, this is like the Knight Codex, like the original Knight Codex, right? You know, I paid money and, and I got, you know, one data sheet or two data sheets. Um, this Space Wolf book, there are 30 units in this. Yeah, 30 that's what I was on, getting at. On top of the, like, whatever, like 104 or something, so like, there is mm -hmm. so – I mean, there may actually be more Space Wolf units than there are Ultramarine units. Like, there is a huge amount of units in this book. That's because they, they took all of the characters that were current and put them in there. So if you're oh, wondering yeah. where your Logan Grimnar was, if you're wondering where your Ragnar Blackbeard mm -hmm. was, if you're wondering where your Canis Wolfborn was, they're all in that book. So all the characters oh, yeah. in there, there's 16 new stratagems, or not new, but additional stratagems on top of all the stratagems you get in the Space Marine book. Oh, Relics, yeah. uh, war gear. They have their I mean, psychic discipline, too. And you have really weird, like, funky people, too, who you forgot about. Yeah. Like, you got, yeah. like, Chrom Dragon gazes in here. He's mm -hmm. from, like, he's Tooth from, like, the Beast Arises, or Tooth and Claw. Yeah, like, he's, like, from... You know, like, like yeah, uh, seventh. You know, they, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Harold, you know, they're just, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count them real fast. Just named characters in this book. There are, yeah. there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. There are ten named characters yeah. in this book, which is pretty impressive. So, yeah. what are we thinking about them overall? Uh, and one of them is a Primaris Marine. Yeah. <laughs> I right. do appreciate the the fact that they included all of the Space Wolf central centric units, like the Wolfen, uh, yep. the 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 um, murder bot. What's his face? Murder Fang. <laughs> murder Fang. Yeah, murder, murder bot. Fang. Murder Fang. I call him Murder Face for obvious reasons. But um, yeah, they have all of those units that you know, Thunder Wolf Cavalry. All of the iconic Space Wolf centric units are now consolidated into the supplement which is where you kind of want all those things um it makes me wonder if we're going to get reprints for some of the other chapters later like ultramarines uh, because right now you have to use our old supplement book which i guess still works but i don't know um it does give me hope for the uh, dark angels and blood angels books though because they have a, a good chunk of, of unique units too so yeah uh but overall i'm i'm I, I like this Codex supplement version better than the previous Space yes. Marine supplement versions. Um, if people are wanting their money's worth I th for rules-wise, um, they still get all the lore. They get like 30 pages of lore in that book. So I don't, I don't see a downside <laughs> to, the, to the new format. Plus, again, digital rules in the back. You get the little code to activate it on Warhammer, uh, the Warhammer app. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't... I don't see a downside to it. I think it's a nice little, especially for space wolf players. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, all the stuff is there, you know, they have all their special disciplines. I mean, yeah, I think, I think, you know, the, so this gives me a lot of hope that we're going to get a lot of really meaty, good 
high quality upgrades when we get to the other first founding chapters. So when we right. when they, you know when we see the Blood Angel book, it's going to be really really good and dense yep. and have a lot of yep. content in it. Uh, when we get Dark Angels, same thing. So there, it's not just going to yep. be kind of the really thin thin you know units. Uh, we also saw that the Sons of Morkai are in this book. So now they're getting so Space Wolves are the first unit. They're the first of the successor chapters that are getting a unique Primaris unit. So that all kid, right. So we yeah. did we did we did kind of get Blood Angels Intercessor or uh, Intercessor uh, Death Company Intercessors, right? Death sure. Company yeah, so yeah. that was rolled out that's true, in that's true. That's uh, true. in in the Blood of Ball book, but there's no kit for that. That was just you can paint them differently, nothing yeah. different. And they were pretty yeah. weak. They didn't actually have any real special rules other than just right. like their intercessors that also have the Death Company special rule tagged on. Yeah. Like this is an actual unique unit that does something very different and is and is very cool and has a kit now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah rules I, wise, happy too, to see that. Rules wise too, these guys are really good against psychers. They get mm -hmm. uh, like an extra attack. They can get uh I think it's a minus one at eighteen inches and a minus two at six inches for psychic test for psychers nearby. They can't be targeted by psychers unless they are the closest enemy unit. So uh, they also have a four up save against wounds lost in the psychic phase. So randomly yeah, they're they're really good against psychers. Um, I'm curious, like like you guys are talking about. I'm curious to see, you know, the the Death Company intercessors are a really good example. Are we going to see a Primaris focused Death Company kit? I hope so. I hope that we get like uh, assault intercessor Death Company, like as their right. own special yeah. box sure. set. You know, where we have basically the, and I don't think we will. Well, no, that's not true because the uh, the intercessors are getting a multi part kit. We know that, so sure. I, I could see GW slapping in like you know a five man team with the uh, uh, assault intercessor sprue and uh, blood angel upgrade sprues. I, I mean, I, yeah, this would be a good chance, especially because they have more stuff. If they wanted to go back and do it for all, this is something they should do for all the chapters, right? There should mm -hmm. be a heavy intercessor. Unit that is Iron Hands, right? Or Imperial, oh, that's Imperial oh, yeah. Fist, right? Imperial Fist for sure. Imperial oh Fist, yeah. Right? There should there should be, uh, you know, an infiltrator unit that's Raven Guard or yeah, an yeah. unit that's Raven Guard, right? I mean, exactly. we've we've got it's, it's yeah. not hard to do. There should be Hellblasters that are a special Dark Angel thing, right? Yeah. Um, there should be intercessors that are just intercessors because for ultramarines, because that's well, just that's just <laughs> you know that's just ultramarines. I don't get anything special. Well, I mean, right. I think. <laughs> I think that they have to do this because we've had 20 years of all of these of these the, the important first founding chapters they 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 are unique and they do have unique right. unique vehicles and just unfortunately now that we're in the primaris era they're like hey wait we mm -hmm. need to start. <laughs> they need. They need. They need primaris ones now. They can't. None just of their be primaris. Like, right. None of the old stuff really matters. And yeah. and I mean, luckily. Uh oh, uh oh, um, you know the era of supplements works really good for this, right? Correct, right? Because yep. you don't have to gum up the main book with ten, you know, right. with ten Weird. data sheets for slightly different units that only one faction can take. That kind of thing. I mean, this right, right. it was something we 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 were hoping we would see with the first round of supplements, and we didn't really get to see that, unfortunately. And I mean, to for 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 me, I'm really curious to see if they're gonna. Are we going to see them use this entire model when they move to the chaos side of things? Are, are the chaos right. things mm. still so divergent that they each need their own standalone codex because they're so different? Or are they going to move to the same model to where, or or it could be a hybrid, right? Like you could see that the cult legions are supposed to be the most different. So you could actually mm -hmm. see Thousand Sons, World Eaters, um, Death Guard and Emperor Children having standalone, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they said, "Here's a Chaos Space Marine Core unit, and then we're going to make hmm. supplementals for Iron Hands, Alpha Legion for you know the the non cult legions because those are supposed to be much closer. They're not right. as divergent. They're not so. as divergent. I mean, I think, I mean, you would have thought that before, right? That that Space Wolves or Blood Angels have had their own codex for five editions or whatever now, six yeah. editions. You yep. wouldn't have thought that they would do this. That they would do this. So it makes me think that it would be easy for them to do it for chaos. And yep, I think so. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two is sure. the year of chaos where we get a new chaos codex and we we do get you know nine supplements for it. So good. Um, so good. I don't, I don't know if 
I, I don't hate. know if the Death Guard. I, I wouldn't hate it either. I don't know if like the Death Guard have enough units. Correct. Um, that they should get their own codex. Well, again, if they go with this model, then they have the core units in the Chaos Space Ring book, like we've seen before. Right. I I guess. I mean, I guess they could do it. Like, I'm just thinking of some of the other, like the, like for example, um, the World Eaters, really only have corn berserkers. But they're supposed to have a bunch of of weird funky stuff, and they have had well, weird funky stuff in past editions. I mean, if but they, they have. Do- they have as much as the Imperial Fists have, right? Or the White Stars. That's true. They've got, yes. they've got yes, a they character do. and a unit. That's yes. as much as they yeah. got. So, Correct. Uh, yeah, like yeah. they got. Yeah, it would be very easy for them to say, yeah, like you, they have their Berserkers, and then they're going to have uh, the what do they call the, the the Red Butchers, the the Berserkers, yeah, Terminators. the Terminators. Right. I could yeah, see that. Yeah, that. That's you know, they have it'd be really easy to give them some some stuff. Um, yeah. Maybe they should. Yeah, that would be a bad move. You know, I uh, and. I, I wonder because the Hound of Morakai box is really interesting because it's the first time we've seen something like this, right? We, I don't think yes. mm-hmm. ever 100%. we've seen them just be like, here's an existing kit with an upgrade sprue and it's make, and it makes an entirely new unit, right? We, I don't think right. we've seen that. Right, before. with different and, rules. We, right, right, with totally yeah. different rules. Yep. And that's an interesting uh, – Death Company. Very, but we didn't – but Death Company had – we haven't seen a kit like that for Death Company, right? No, no. The, the the old Space Ring Death Company was basically you got oh, the Space Ring box set, yeah. and then sure. you had a bunch right. of you had a bunch of Death Death Company accessories you could sprinkle right. in there. Yeah, uh, it's oh, yeah. It's, it's close, kind, kind, but yeah, Death Company is maybe the closest we've seen, right? But we haven't but really is, seen something. This, this is, is to his point. This is a really cool concept, and this is right. the first and time it, we've seen Primaris in particular. To, Right, and it would be easy to do it for you know have one of those for all the chapters, and it would be easy to carry on a similar thing yep. uh, mm-hmm. for the legions if they want to make legion upgrades. Because I mean, they don't really need to do it for the ones that have their own codexes right now because they have plenty of yep. stuff. But you know, it yeah. would be easy to have the uh, you know to have the, the world leaders upgrade sprue. That's some the same. That's the same as this. That's some arms and stuff and. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. you throw that pack in with something else, and then you have a new unit right there. <laughs> you do what people are already doing, which is you get a bunch of coronate heads from Age of Sigmar, and you buy the right. Chaos Space Marines, and you make your own corn corn like everybody has cool. done. Like yeah. I, I mean, done, clearly, yeah. clearly, <laughs> clearly, you, you you throw that pack in with with some bikers, and then you have corn bikers or something. Weird. There you go. Terminators. Yeah. The hounds yeah. of corn. The hounds of corn. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I, I would. Yeah, I could see them doing that now. Like they really, and then we can get make... a new life out of the twenty-year-old yeah. biker models. <laughs> no new bike, no new bike models for chaos. Oh, You're don't right. Even say, don't even say that. Don't even say that. <laughs> but yeah. no, uh, man, chaos, chaos doesn't get to evolve. They're stuck in the warp. Those are those are classic. Don't, don't jinx it. <laughs> don't jinx it. I mean, the, the uh, chaos space marines did get bigger. The chaos terminators did get slightly bigger. So I don't know. Yeah. Hey man. I don't. Th- I think Abe's right though. I don't think we're going to get new chaos bikes for a long, long time. I'm trying then, to remember. Maybe, maybe we'll you, get new berserkers. If we're do you all remember which legion <laughs> is which legion is Doom Rider from? Is he uh, uh, Emperor's Children? Emperor's Children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. He does that warp dust. You Doom Rider. You, you Doom Rider. I'm holding out, man. I'm holding, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because uh, I mean, clear, clearly the ac- accident is going to happen. Is is uh, I mean, either they just need to make Doom Rider the headless horseman at this point, where he just carries around his skull or whatever. Yes, be um, sweet. Or yeah. they, or or they have some. They need to have like, you know, the Emperor's children launch a big attack and break into the the White Scars Fortress Monastery, and they just put his skull <laughs> onto a primar- <laughs> onto a decapitated Primaris Marine, and then you get Primaris Doom Rider. Yes, hundred uh, percent. Hey man, 100%. Fabius Pyle, he had his chance to like. Get all the uh, primary stuff out. They, they yeah, already the announced wave. it. They are the the uh, uh, which one is it? The um, um, the Necron Codex. The Necron Codex specifically says that um, uh, who's the guy? Who's the 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 collector? The guy who who Trazon uh, Trazon Tra- Tra- yeah, Tra- 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 has Doom Rider in his collection. He yeah. Got oh, so he's, he's like, basically <laughs> he got him. So he caught him. Trazon, so that's Trazon that's is... their excuse to never have to make Doom Rider again. Is they were just like. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like just they like you know I'm sure like 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 you know you know you know Jervis walked up to like a writer and just say just just add Doom Rider to that sentence and we'll never have to make him again. No, great. you know what it is. Trazon is actually the Warhammer Legends team. 
So anything <laughs> that's going to Warhammer Legends, yes. that's, that's Trazon is actually you just got he's got a big big he's got he, now he just has several Forge Worlds in his collection. That's so good. <laughs> why he's why awesome. are there no more Riza patterns? Leave it Russes. Uh, he has Riza <laughs> is just in his collection now. It's in a little, yeah. little bottle. That is the excuse he like his collection half is called. Yeah. Warhammer Legends. Come into Warhammer the Legends. Legends. Yeah. It's Warhammer um, Legends. It's perfect. It's have, perfect. They, just have, they, just, they just made like a reference to, do you want to see like my normal collection? Or do you want to see the Legends Hall? Yes. <laughs> They're like, it's not really that interesting in there. It's mostly just old stuff that, you There's know, just some weird... With little value. Yeah, correct. <laughs> uh, let's move over and talk Death Watch. This, yeah. Actually, this, so while I am super impressed... That uh, that the Space Wolf book is so dense and will keep Space Wolf people happy. I think from a rules and actually playing the game point of view, the Death Watch. This is a really interesting army, and they did yeah. a lot of good work. I think I think uh, the designers really kind of stretched their design muscles because this this army plays and functions weirdly. So it is it is Space Marines for people who want funky Space Marines, and that's what mm-hmm. I like. About, uh, like they're they're it's a it's a weird codex and weird in a good way. So Abe, what do you what are you most impressed by in the in this codex? What do you think is cool? Yeah, uh, I mean it's definitely the a weird codex that that this was the one more than any of them that we were like or that I was at least like I don't know if this should be a supplement. Like this is pretty weird. They function very differently. Yep, I agree. Um, but it is. Um, so we get to I mean and you know it. It's fine. I mean that that part's fine, I guess. So for Death Watch players, it's definitely, I think, uh, you get a lot of power out of it. You've got more kill teams, more options. Yep. You now get more stratagems and everything. They uh, they change the stratagems around a lot, which I think was a better thing because you had kind of a lot of just like Death Watch had. They have some now, but they have way too many situational ones, and it was like, yep, a bunch of weird stuff in, in mm-hmm. it. So I think it's a really, it is a really cool. It is really cool and unique. Um, there are some still, as I had mentioned when we talked about the index, which turned out to be very similar to this, um, other than like some weird point cost changes was like one of the big ones, and I'm not certain why they bothered printing them in the index to change them two weeks later, but whatever. Um, uh, but yeah, it, there's some weird choices. I think that we might, you know there's a huge limitation of what can get special issue ammo, which is probably my biggest disappointment with the book. Sure. Um, special issue was incredibly powerful. Definitely. Um, and there are some like weird things you can do to, uh, like give a special issue ammo to, uh, a outrider sergeant or whatever and get it sure. all on shots. Um, but yeah, you don't get a lot of special issue ammo. It's a disappointment because that's a big part of Death Watch. Uh, and especially if you're playing like a more modern Primaris focused Death Watch, you're basically never going to make use of that rule. I understand that it would have been really powerful to give it to them. Uh, and I think a lot of it was that they didn't want to have to reprice everything for sure. using mm-hmm. them and, and, and possibly reprint a bunch of data sheets with the new weapons. Because um, it was a lot easier for them just to say, use the data sheets and the points of this other codex. Uh, and I think at that point you really would have ended up with be this having to be its own codex if they were like, oh well, all of the data sheets have to be slightly t- tweaked to get the special issue ammo thing. Um, but that is definitely my that's my biggest disappointment with the book is how limited that is. Uh, but I think the um, the kill teams are really cool. You can make really cool combinations and do some really weird stuff. It has a ton of customization and customability. Uh, both in the classic, uh, you know, the classic like Death Watch veteran kind of kill team, sure. and the new ones, uh, and you also have the kill team specializations that let you even get more crazy upgrades. So you really yeah. do feel um, like you have a lot of special things. And I think one of the weird things, I mean, again, whether it's good or bad, because they took out special issue ammo for most things, is basically you can run. I mean, you could run any army is that like, you could just build your space marine army and run it as death watch right like you don't actually have sure. to build as a death watch army um or you can but you don't actually have to pay a ton of points so it kind of like death watch were suffering a little bit from being expensive models so mm-hmm. you, you know their intercessors are the same points as anyone else's intercessors now that kind of thing sure. 
So, um, so, Abe, real quick, you keep mentioning the uh, that not everything has special issue ammo. First off, mm -hmm. special issue ammo, they brought back the cracking, <coughs> hellfire, all those yep, things. Right. There's four what types. Units, yeah. yeah, what units don't have access to special issue ammo? Because I think if, if folks haven't seen the book yet, that's what they're wondering. I mean, it's really easy to say what units have issued, access sure. to it. Yeah, that's Because the only units yeah. that have access to it are if you actually have you have to. It, it's no longer like an army rule. It's a weapon. It's basically this is a, a weapon upgrade, right? Or it says it on your mm -hmm. weapon if you have the Death Watch. And basically, that's like a couple things that say Death Watch Bolton. And the biggest one that has them is the Death Watch Veterans, which are your and the yeah. and the kill team that's built out of them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is your classic Death Watch unit. Yeah. Um, of veterans, and that's really about it. There's a few other like side cases here and there that have it. Um. Uh, but right. like basically just your old fashioned veterans. Stormbolters don't have it. None of the primary yep. units right. have yep. it, right. other than a special thing. Uh, yep. The Watchmaster does have it on his Vigil Spear. Um, so it's, I know. mean, it's at a big picture level, it's a reimagining of what the army is and how the army functions compared to what we've seen yeah. in the past. In the past, you envisioned the Death Watch, and even on their, even on their little like like Watch Fortress diagrams it'd be like there's the, there's the big boss at the top and then there's a bunch of kill teams and those kill teams are all made up of weird combos and they all, and like everyone has special issue ammo whereas right. now the concept of the death watch is there's your watchmaster at the top and then these guys are like a chapter they have all the stuff they have repulsors and they you know they they have all their stuff and then they have a large core of veterans who are troops, so they're really common, but those mm -hmm. veterans, those are all identical squads, almost like a tactical squad. It's just a bunch of sure. guys. They're not mixed, and those guys, that's the core of the Death Watch force where all of the special issue ammo is concentrated. Then there's all the mixed the mixed uh, kill team squads. This is the, the official symbol for mixed, is this? Okay. Uh, uh, they're right. all mixed kill team squads, and those guys don't have special issue ammo, but those guys have weird... They have specialist training, which is basically all right. their weird specialist doctrine. So those are the guys who are like, I don't have special ammo, but like, I'm good at killing Eldar, or I'm good at killing orcs, or I'm good at you know, I I wound. I'm good better. at killing vehicles, or right, yeah, whatever. Lords of War, yeah. So it's just, and people were 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 also kind of originally worried when we first opened the book that, uh, like, I know uh, several of the competitive players we were talking to were like, they don't have like a, a special chapter rule, like like a, like their bonus compared to everybody right. else, and is that going to nerf the army? And it looks like overall now that, that people have kind of sat with, with it over the weekend and studied it, I think everyone is, is like, these these guys are good. Like, they don't, like, the, the combination of them being able to mix and match their, their chapter tactics from turn to turn combined with their specialist, uh, uh, their specialist rules, I think is probably those two things combined and, and more than makes up for the fact that they don't have, you know... Well, a but their special buff. rule is their their super buff is that they get to pick their their dog. Exactly right. 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 So so if you're not familiar, they do have a a, a chapter tactic, which is the one that lets them pick a, a combat mission role tactics. Roll one. Sure. Mission yeah. tactics lets them reroll ones against it, and then their their super doctrine is. And honestly, this is probably how it always should be for space brains. I'll say, but uh, it's basically they aren't stuck to the first turn devastator, second turn. Yep, tactical third. You know, then then the second turn is either tactical or you go into assault. Right? They're not stuck with that. They right. get to pick every turn what doctrine they're going to be in. They have limitations. They can only pick doctrine one. They can only be in devastator doctrine once. One once. They can only they can tactical only pick twice, tactical two. twice, and they can only pick assault three times. Yeah. Right. Um, so they are limited in what they can do, but they get to pick that, which means that if they don't want to wait until turn three to be in assault doctrine, for instance, uh, they can be in it on turn one. Now, of course. All this does do is give them the, the AP, right? They're, they don't sure. get any other super bonus benefit out of that. But that's still pretty good. Um, yeah, 100%. It makes them highly makes them flexible. flexible. Yeah, it makes them highly yeah. flexible, especially, for instance, if you're taking an army that doesn't have heavy weapons in it, which is, mm -hmm. is possible or has very few. You could just start off in tactical doctrine, um, which is not a bad thing, especially if you're making use of some of the newer stuff. Um, right, right. Yeah, so I'm going to... In option, oh, finish. Yeah. I'm going mm -hmm. to also note I really like that compared to the other people, they seem to have a lot of ways of of kind of controlling who you can shoot at. 
Greeks, which is yeah. kind of an interesting thing. So yeah. kind of, so between the Xeno Purge discipline that gives them a mantle of shadow where you can pick a unit and be like, you can't shoot at me unless I'm the closest, basically. And they can do that with Corvus Black Stars. They can be like, here's a stratagem for those. So if you have a bunch of guys in the who is a maligned unit that is rarely used, but now if you can be like, I'm going to put something nasty in it and be like, hey, you can't shoot this thing unless it's the closest. So they have things like that which is kind mm-hmm. of interesting. So they can kind of control who you're shooting at more, which is a very non-Marine thingy. Right. I, and I, mean, I, I like that a lot. And Death Watch veterans are pretty nasty at this point. Like, yeah. I don't want to understell, like, it, yes, they're the only, they're really the only thing that gets special issue ammo in any large numbers other than a few, you know, one-off things. And again, there's still the weird thing that there is, you know, the Death Watch issue twin bolt gun that, Vet that bikes don't get. They're stuck with the basic bolt, a twin bolt gun, and the special bike from the Kill Team Cassius is the only thing that gets that in the game. Yep. So there's still weird things like that, um, which could be misprints. We don't know for certain until the FAQ comes out, but probably aren't. Um, but Death Watch veterans, um, they're more expensive than Intercessors uh, if you take the base because they because they're twenty they're twenty three points versus twenty points. But the veteran has the same stat line as an intercessor because he's got sure, the, two right. and the two attacks yep. uh, because they're 23 points because they all come with a power sword. Yep. Um, yep. It's so very nice. Power weapon with that. So they're strength five and, you know, AP and then the death watch bolt gun with special issue ammo is more, is actually more better than a bolt than a bolt rifle. Uh, sure. Especially cause you can, you know, you can make it damage too. And that makes it really powerful. I, um, I think my opinion is I think that so far of all the of the Marines we've seen, I think that the the Death Watch may be the army that uses fusions of classic Marines and Primaris the yeah. best. And oh I yeah, think you, and I, I think agree. you'll commonly see that. Like I think on lots of other books, you're going to be like, yeah, I have some classic Marines, and there be there may be one or two units that are cool, but prime. But overall, I'm still moving. The, the Death Watch have yeah. plenty of classic Marine options that are mm-hmm. really that are really solid. Like they they can kick your butt with with classic yeah. marine stuff. They I mean, can. Their, their primary stuff is good too. It's so it's just yeah. they don't have like big sections of the book that are like crappy. No, they don't. And they've got real some really interesting combinations we've talked about before. Uh, you know, Adam, we already said you can you can you can spin off the five, uh, yep. you know, five out five outriders as a troop choice that has a just secured. Uh, if you take the the heavy squad, you can take. Yeah. Um, the Gravis squad, you know, five, five, five eradicator squad, or yep. five eradicators yep. that are troops and objectives secured. Um, the yeah. the, the, the well, Spectus one has some, some interesting options in it uh, because you yeah. could take, uh, you can either you, you can take five elimin, yeah, the Phobos squad. You could take five eliminators um, as a troop choice, which is great for sitting in your backfield and also yeah. more eliminators that you can get. Um, <laughs> yep. Alternatively, uh, you can take you could spin off a squad that has four of them and then an infiltrator and the infiltrator could have say the multi-spectrum array um yep so that they can get the the um the benefits of a phobos captain for rerolls sure. so that has not to be nearby them. so normally yep. so you can get easier rerolls or you can yep, you know yep, yep. you can or you can take the helix gauntlet which lets you ignore basically one failed save a turn uh, normally, you can only get that on infiltrators, but you could put that in with eliminators and make them a lot tougher. Uh, which also gives them the smoke screen rule, so you can use smoke screen on them to get the minus one to be hit. Um, so there's some <laughs> really interesting combinations there. I feel like some of them, uh, like I, I, I feel like the outrider one right now is kind of the one that everyone's like, oh my god, you could do this thing, and it yep. feels like one of those things that's not going to really pan out in competitive sure. play. Um, yeah. That it's it's you know it's really expensive and I don't know how actually good it's going to be. Like yeah. they're definitely they're definitely rough, but that feels like one of these things that a lot of people are fixating on that may not be as great, and it may end up being all of a sudden like, man, Death Watch veterans are really good. Sure, um, yep. it does. It, it it amuses me that this army would actually be a great army to uh, <clears throat> to ba- to make a. Uh, an unnumbered sons, a gray shield army out of right because they're mm. oh, the yeah. gray shields were all the primaris before yep. the you know that were during the Adamus crusade that were all mixed from different from different yep. founding lines yep. and they have the ability in this book which was a gray shield ability in uh in vigilus if you remember yep. uh they have they have an ability in this book where you can basically borrow someone else's chapter tactic for 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 a bit sure. um so yeah. like 
you you I, in, and, and the gray shields and we kind of saw some weird formations with gray shields that we never saw anywhere else so like this if you wanted to really, rebuild that army you could do yeah it this would be a really cool army to, yeah. to to build it and you could i mean you do the same thing right because they all have the one shoulder pad that's got their old their yep. old legion on it but but crossed uh, out or whatever with the gray shield so wait one about, last thing too about one the last thing about book. both of these books well, is that got, uh we haven't we haven't mentioned it is uh they both come with crusade rules so if you yes. if you want to play crusade they they have all the crusade rules which is like battle honors battle scars crusade relics crusade upgrades so go nuts with uh space sure. wolves and death right. and crusade and, and, and and not only that, I'll, I'll add to. Um, they also come um, with the uh, with uh, with the new with new secondary missions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. Which the Death Watch ones are actually really amazing, uh, and we don't know how tournaments are really going to play with this right now because there's right. definitely a weird thing where. <laughs> You know the four books that have special sec that have new special secondary objectives kind of have an advantage over everyone else. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. And that's the thing that I that's one of the reasons I really do hope that they go back and rework the other supplements fairly soon because those supplements don't have secondary objectives, they don't have crusade rules, and that's sure. definitely and, and they feel I mean they as you said they're not as dense they feel sure. weaker overall and they can mm -hmm. I, I am normally not my last little word and then we'll move on to to, to forge world is i'm not normally a big giant fan of relics like and i think a lot of relics are fairly uh ignored or not used especially mm -hmm. weapon relics i think weapon mm -hmm. relics are basically one of the most unused things in the game but <laughs> but i want to read to you the rules for the thief of secrets this is a sword uh, that the Death Watch can get. The Thief of Secrets is range melee, type melee, strength plus one, AP minus four, damage one. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, invulnerable armor saves cannot be made against the attack. Nice. Uh, each time an attack is made with this weapon is allocated to Tyranids, Eldari, Orcs, Necrons, or Tau. That attack has a damage characteristic of two. Now you put that okay. on some of those. That's just a relic. You can put put that on on any of those Marine HQs. So right there, that I would not be surprised to see that guy showing up. That's yeah, a, and that guy's pretty cool. Uh, I also like, uh, you know, you've got you've got some fun options, right? The relic relics, of the the Death Watch definitely got more relics, which was great. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Space Death Watch, ton of relics, ton of everything. All right, we're yeah. going to go through this. We're going to spend about. Uh, we're going to go through this kind of quick. We will talk much more about this, probably maybe mm -hmm. even like all next week, because um, this book is huge and there's so much to go through. All right, yeah. uh, the new Forge World uh, Imperial Armor Compendium. Um, uh, give you guys some really quick basics on this. This book is immense. It has two hundred and twenty-four pages. Two hundred and twenty-four pages. It's got well over two hundred units. Uh, the table of contents has already been released and seen. Um, it is mo it is monstrous. Massive. Uh, <laughs> Massive over, table 80, contents. over 80 Forge World units that appeared in the uh, over 80. Let me reach over here. I'm reaching. Over 80 Forge World units that uh, appeared in in the uh, in the Munitorum Guide are now cut and are no longer in this. So there's a huge. They got traces. Amount. There was already a big cut, right? They, yeah. So so yeah, 80, they 80 got Forge World units. <laughs> Have been trazened and they're in trazen's uh, collection right, right right now. You know, everyone <laughs> pour one out for the Chinork. That's my favorite. That the the orc yeah. Chinork. It's gone. I'm sorry, but I just saved. saw someone was bought, bought stuff to convert one this week. Yeah. So uh, you guys go, Abe. What are you thinking about what's going on in this book, Adam? What are you thinking about going on with this book? You know, we'll just we'll kind of go fast and and look for like overall trends. Uh, I think the biggest thing about this book is that it it, it toned everything down. Um, yes, it, it was it brought everything in line with the game. So there's no longer it doesn't feel like Forge World is operating on its own set of rules. Yes, um, there is definitely this feeling I had with the older Forge World stuff for a while that like and it wasn't necessarily bad, but it was they wanted to be very unique. So sure. we're not going to use generic. It was its rules. own thing. Yeah. Our, Everything has to be a little different. We and, and part of that, I think, was just we have to justify trying to sell this kit that's slightly different. So it needs to be somehow sure. different. 
right? Uh, so all of that's gone. This feels like it's playing with the same rules. Most of this book just references other books at this point with generic rules. There's no longer, you know, it's not every unit has its own weird, unique, special rule anymore. It's you have this generic rule. A lot of it's gone. All the abuse, pretty much all of the really abusable stuff was gone. I don't think yep. that there's really any power units in this book to a degree. Which is um, good. Which is good. Yeah, I mean, a few things got are still decent. Uh, the, oh, yeah. uh, the Astrayu or the the however you say it, the the, the primary yeah. super heavy, yep. actually got a little bit better. Um, Excellent. Uh, they streamlined some stuff uh, with like board shields work differently across the board, both both for that thing and for titans. Uh, they're a little better. They're just like they're kind of like ablative wounds instead of weird semi invulnerable saves and stuff. Okay. Um, so I think overall it's a great change for game balance. Uh, yeah. If you were building your army around a lot of four units, it's probably bad for you because either because there's a good <laughs> chance those units don't exist anymore, uh, <laughs> right. or they're just not particularly great anymore. I don't think there's. I, mean, yeah. I haven't. I don't think any of us have spent enough time with that book because it's like we said. There's 200 units in it or so. Yeah. Correct. Uh, yeah. I mean to really like drill down and be like, oh, is this broken now yeah. or is this is it? I'll but it really say- feels. If you liked four drilled units and you thought they were really cool and you had like a couple four drilled units here and there in your collection mm-hmm. because you really liked the theme or, or the thematic, probably you will still be able to use them to supplement your army to make it a little different and cool and you're and you'll be fine. But if you were the kind of person who was cherry picking four drilled units and ma- and min maxing them specifically looking for the broken stuff, your four drilled collection is trash right now. Right. <laughs> like that is not going to work anymore. And whatever armies uh, you, you built around those things now is not going to work anymore so yeah and they got rid of a lot of kind of again they got rid of a lot of the, like this is slightly different a lot of the weird lehman russ variants or things yes. like that that were this is like this other lehman russ but has this minor rule or something yep. it's just gone. yeah right. uh, a lot of the dreadnoughts got cut there's only like three dreadnoughts in the book now i think Correct. right yep. uh there's there's like the more the relic contemptor the, the contemptor is in there the uh Drudo the Leviathan and, uh, and the Dreadno, the, and like, that's the Leviathan, it. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. Um, so I, I mean, I'm sad that the uh, the Mortis Dreads all got cut because those were pretty cool and they were fixing to be really hot. Um, sure, being able to dual wield multi melters in the new edition. With now the they're really edition. hot in uh, in Trayson's collection. Trayson's collection. Yeah. yeah, they're really hot in there. They're still hot. My my there. biggest thing, my biggest takeaway from the new book is that. Uh, Warlord Titans are 5,500 points for both Imperial and Chaos. So they there you go. 6, they used to be 6,000. They used to be 6,000. That's a 500 point discount right there. That's like a quarter and, of a 2,000 point army, almost and mathematically, I, th- I think. And, and I think. and I think that there's still single characters that can kill them. That's, you know, that's a thing too. But I think overall, again, if you have a Forge World collection, if you have any Forge World units, um, you kind of have to get that book for to, to, to use your models. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I've never been a huge, huge Forge World player in general. Um, I just I don't like resin, <laughs> so it's just <laughs> sure. me. I don't like I don't like working with resin. But um, yeah, again, there are some cool models. One of the things I did like, other than the, the points, of course, for the uh, the Warlord Titan, was the uh, the inclusion of all the Space Marine characters from Forge World. So you have like Guys like uh, 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 Gabriel Angelos from the uh, uh, Red, um, the guy, the de- the de- the um, what are they Blood called? Raven. The the Blood, Blood Raven. Thank you. Yeah, and then you've got um, from the Dawn of War series. Then you've got like uh, um, Cullen from uh, the Red Scorpions. You've got yep. you even have rules for um, Huron while he's an Astral yep. Claw character, which is yep. a loyalist. So you can use him as a loyalist character, uh, which That's is cool. kind of neat. So there's there's just weird one off space ring characters like that. Um, if you want to include any of them in your match playlist, you do have to pay an extra command point, which is, yep. I think, fair. Um, but there's just a lot of those weird one off Forge World characters that are in this book too. Um, yeah, but there's so many units to go through. Like yeah. uh, again, over 200. It's just a lot. It's a lot. I did. I do want to say I lied. There is there the 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 termite drill. Is the standout unit of this book? That's true. The uh, that, 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 that is clearly absolutely mind. insanely good. <laughs> it is. Um, I'm going to use the example of the links as just a general example to talk about the because uh, I think it's a very prototypical example of what we of trends that we're seeing in this book. So the links is 
um, how the Lynx was described is it is an Eldar uh, skimmer. Uh, it, um, Crab tank, it, yep. it came out, it's fairly old now, it's over 10 years old. It came out with uh, Casterel Novum. Uh, which is where the Eldar Corsair list was. From a fluff point of view, the uh, the, the links is described as basically this was this is a super old Eldar unit, it, like predates the fall. This is like what they were building before they built their super heavy later. So it's like a proto super. It's like it's the Eldar equivalent of like the Malkin. It's an old thing that is now crappy and craft worlds don't use it anymore. And mm-hmm. like pirates use it, right? So it's like this, you know, it's the junkyard dog of the Eldar. Um, forces and back then forge world of course being forge world was like we're going to give this thing weird crazy you, you know uh rules so like it, it had this really long page of like half page of rules that was like mm-hmm. it has all of these normal rules and it's a hover tank and then if you want to at the start of the turn you can say it's a flyer and then it, it's like it's position change and it turns into a flyer and then all these rules apply to it and it loses all these other rules and then it has to be a flyer for at least a turn and then you can turn it back into a tank. So it was, mm-hmm. it was, it was really complicated and really weird, right? Mm-hmm. And then the links in this new book is it just has its stats. It's better than like a falcon or those things. It's bigger and tougher, but it's not as it's not as as uh, it lands like halfway in between the normal craft world tanks and like the scorpion and the cobra and and the super heavies yeah. so it's good and they got rid of all of those rules and just said hey if this thing um if you um uh, speed of all if you advance don't roll for the extra d6 you just add 12. so going with the theme of what they were trying to achieve before but in like one sentence of rules rather than half a page of weird funkiness. Right. Yeah. Right? So they brought like, everything in line yeah. with itself. Exactly. So now you got a lot of that. I mean I yeah. mean this it it feels like the biggest thing to me is that it feels like the 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 indexes for 8th edition felt like they just try to transcribe a bunch of, bunch of stuff yes. from 7th edition or from whatever mm-hmm. book it had come out in, which wasn't even necessarily 7th edition, into 8th edition. You got a lot of funky things um, that didn't work well because of that. This actually feels more uh, more thought out, I guess I would say. Sure. Um, yeah. Which is which is sad uh, in some ways because there's – did you see did you see Arbor Sliders lost their guns again, Larry? I know. I'm so sad. It's okay. It's okay. When I glued the guns on, I purposely added the heavy bolters and I put them under the wings and I put all these weird tubes and things on them so right. that so that they can be just air conditioners. Like they don't actually have to be weapons. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you have the world's largest collection of Arvis lighters. Hey man, Arvis lighters forever. Arvis lighters right. forever. Yeah. There's definitely uh, a lot of stuff like that though. Uh, which again, I always think it's funny when like. You know, like like when we we're like Death Watch, like Death Watch intercessors could use special issue ammo for like a year, and now they've all forgotten how to do it. And they only gave well, them like four crates of ammo. Right, right. Like, right. Oh, they right. ran out. They ran out of ammo. Harvest lighters could have weapons on them, but now they've forgotten how to do that. Yeah, uh, you get you get all those weird things. Yeah. So I think, like coincidentally, while really, we're while we're seeing a huge normalization of these units and, and a lot of people who had like trick armies are kind of bitching because they've lost their tricks. I think that this actually net makes forge world units more attractive because they're fair now. Like I don't, you know, so because there were a lot of really underperforming crap uh, forge world units and now everything seems like it's been brought up to like the middle. Yeah. If, and I mean, I think t- t- to me, it, to, to me, it feels like Forge World is now something that if I saw it across the table for me, I wouldn't immediately go, "Oh, great, Forge World." Now it's like, oh, yes, it's, it's Forge World. Yeah, okay, sure. sure. Yep, it's fine. It's mostly fine. Like I'm sure there's something busted in there. There's twenty. There's two hundred <laughs> units to sort through. But at this point now, if you see a Forge World model across the table from you, you don't have to be like, "Oh, great, it's." going to be one of those games right. now it's like right. oh, okay what, it's, it's just what trick combo yeah. is he going to try on turn two right right it's, it's it's not like that right now like again the links is a great example of that it's toned way down it's way simpler to to follow what it does yep yeah we'll, we'll have to play lot, around with a lot it. we of have it. enough forge world around the studio to play around with it, so we have so yeah. much forge world around the studio we need some we need so some much. we need some termite so right <laughs> give it time uh, I, I mean, a lot a lot of it now is really 
that your one of the problems that you had with Forge World to get right was that when you saw it, the units that were taken were generally they're this unit but better. And sure. Yeah. It was yeah. Just, and that's a lot of that's gone. This unit, but just better somehow. Um, yep, and yeah. that's pretty much gone. So it's much more like I'm taking this because I think this is a cool unit kind of thing. I think we're going to see a lot less Forge World in competitive play, but that's fine because it was all that kind of weird corner case BS stuff that you. It saw. was that. Remember that uh, the Hellhound that was the same thing, but just the the Forge World Hellhound right. is better. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. thought you, you had weird stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is our show folks yeah so we're uh just about an hour i'll let mars tell us about our schedule and then we'll be back hold on don't, don't leave yet and then when we're back we're gonna have our our instant on the spot question dun 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 also buy me dun, dun. <laughs> hey folks so this week we've got the rpg corner tomorrow at 3 p.m with jr and megan uh, i know that we're probably going to be talking about the cauldron and her new rules um, Wednesday, we've got Dope Boy Paints over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Bell of Lost Souls at 8. I'm not quite sure what he's working on right now. And then on Friday, we've got the Tabletop Spotlight with Adam back in the studio uh, going over the week's weekend's new releases for board games, card games, miniature games, the whole shebang. Thanks to our folks over at uh, Dragon's Lair Austin. All righty. And your, your, uh, your, um, your question of the week for you guys: What is your uh, uh, what is the one Forge World unit that you're going to buy because of this book, Adam? I'm buying this. <laughs> Adam <laughs> says I'm going to go with the uh, Beale and Grimm version of Icewind Dale. Hell's yeah! Look at this. All thing. right. Sorry, uh, Malanthrope. I have one already. Malanthrope. Abe, what is your favorite? Uh, I mean, the termite's really great. Not that I'm going to buy one. You're going to buy me one, but yeah, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> There'll be one Bulls branded, Bulls branded termite on the way soon. I am course. We, I, 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 we need to, we need to paint it. We need to paint it like uh, uh, we need to paint it. You know, because it's it's got that shape. We have to paint it like some kind of medicinal pill. So it's it's the bitter pill to swallow when when you fight yeah. it. <laughs> I of course am going with my Porphyrion, who's dropped from 900 points to 750. Hooray for me. Hey, you can almost fit three in an army now. Uh, almost. So, all right, everyone, that is our show. <laughs> we will catch you guys later. Oh, my God, you're so in love with uh, Icewind Dale. We'll be showing this off later this week, folks, hopefully. Yeah, but it's a good one. It's a really good one. It's so good. Nice. Stay tuned. Bye, everybody. Bye. Go vote tomorrow. Everyone go, go vote. vote. Everyone Watch go vote. And vote. Wear a mask. Everyone. Be safe. Yeah. Thank you.